Hey everyone, my name's Simon, and in this episode of the Maserati Guy, we're going to be asking the question, the BMW iDrive, was it really that bad? And the answer, unsurprisingly, is no. Uh, I think the iDrive is a really excellent system for uh, controlling the, the car. Um, it is a bit confusing, I guess, to start with when you first start using it, but I think the reason that the iDrive has got the bad reputation that it has is because it was really kind of one of the pioneers of the control dial system of menus and screens, which most cars have now taken up completely. So if you look at um, Mercedes, Audi, all the big brands, they basically go with this single control dial style um, uh, interface uh, with either more or fewer buttons around it and a system of menus that allows you to control various functions of the car. I think the reason that the iDrive was um, pilloried so much was probably because it was a bit of a, uh, it was blazing a trail for new systems, new ways of, of, of controlling car systems um, and settings. And it was probably a bit of a shock to the system and people thought, you know, why are we doing this? What's wrong with buttons? But now obviously every other car manufacturer un under the sun has, has gone that same way. So I'm gonna take you through the basics of how it works and just explain a little bit about um, some of the tricks that you can do. The iDrive system is based on this control wheel here, which rotates as you can see, um, but it also moves in various directions, actually has um, eight different directions, like on the points of a compass, um, to select different, different menu options. Um, it's actually very clever. It's not just a click. It do, doesn't have a, a mechanical click. So, for example, now when we're just on the on the home screen, it has no clicks whatsoever. But you'll see when we get into the menus, it has some kind of electromagnetic resistance system that can actually kind of give it that tactile feedback. So it's it's very clever. It's kind of got a haptic kind of system in it which is pretty pretty revolutionary for the time so the basic control mechanism is that you use the directional control to select the menu so um, you can see on the screen you've got four main menus communication climate navigation and entertainment so if I want to select navigation I move the control dial to the right and it goes into navigation. There's a menu button here which always brings you back to the main menu. If you push it up you get to communication settings which is your phone. Left takes you into the climate controls and down puts you into your entertainment system, which is your radio, CD player, stuff like that. Now, on the other points of the compass, if you like, um, the most useful two are up towards the northeasterly direction, which is onboard data, which has your trip computers and your diagnostics. And the southwesterly direction, which is settings car clock, um, various other you know settings that you can configure. We'll go through those in a minute. So let's have a look at navigation to start with. So we move the dial to the right to enter navigation and you're presented with a standard kind of GPS map. If you push the button down that brings up your menu. In the view menu you can select whether it follows your direction of travel or um, uh, always stays north. Um, you can also adjust the perspective. Now you can see now that the button, that the dial here has got clicks in it, which is really clever. Didn't have clicks before and now it's got clicks in it. 
instead of having a back button to get back to the the main menu if you keep turning the dial you get an even heavier click which takes you back onto the left hand side which is kind of clever and then another heavier click to put you into that so it gives you feedback immediately without having to look at the menu you can see where you are by just the feel of the haptic feedback so you can input your destinations turn on route guidance um, and this little feature down here split allows the map to be shown in the little right hand screen and that will stay there even when you go back to your menu as well which is quite cool so that's your navigation in the communication section pushing up you've got your phone settings there's even a funky little keypad here which allows you to control your phone via a traditional keypad I've never tried that actually it's quite cool I'll try that in a minute in your climate control settings most of the climate control settings are available on the front panel here you've got your temperature your fan speed for both sides um, you've got your air conditioning uh, heated rear window so most of the controls are available through buttons on the front panel um, but you can go through this menu to actually configure it in, in quite a lot of detail um, so you can change a lot of the settings here um, you can even set a default temperature level so it's you know a little bit warmer a little bit cooler the air coming out of the the vents there's even a menu here um, which gives you access to even more configuration you can fine-tune so if I go back this way to fine-tuning you can fine-tune the air outputs to your personal desire I haven't gone into that in great detail but it allows a lot of customization but this is not the kind of thing you'd go into every every time you wanted to change the the aircon settings you would you would simply um, do it through the controls on the front on the front panel here and then in entertainment moving down we have our FM radio AM radio CD player the single CD player then there's a CD changer and TV you can adjust the the tone quality of the sound obviously through there auto store functions available for um, for the radio so it picks up the strongest signals in your area that gives you the basic four um, main um, menus and then if we look at onboard data this one's quite useful because it gives you access to your um, onboard computer um, a second um, journey computer um, you can set a speed limit um, which will display in the instrument cluster and also give you an audible warning when you exceed that speed limit um, you've got timers here not that you're going to be taking this car on the track very much but you know what I mean you can split the screen again to put different information in the right hand side if you want here you've got your engine oil level um, then you've got uh, your diagnostics fairly basic diagnostics um, so and then it will go through checking if there's any fault codes so pretty pretty useful fairly basic diagnostics but um, not a bad thing to have and and pretty good feature again it's not stuff that you need to be using when you're driving it's probably stuff that you'd set when you you know when you're at home or when you start off on a journey you'd reset your your split timers or whatever your your trip computers and then in the settings menu you have kind of those um, default kind of car wide settings um, on this menu here we have the traction control um, it's weird it looks like you turn traction control on but it actually turns it off and it warns you that your dynamic traction control is 
is off. I think that's how it works. I think I'll just check that and get back to you. I don't use it. Um, then in your car, you can select um, an automatic park brake, which is quite useful so that when you come to a stop, it'll apply the park brake. Um, I tend to leave that off. Um, that's your park distance control picture. So when you turn on your park sensors, you get that kind of little um, picture of your car there. No reversing camera in this in this car. Um, then you've got two configurable buttons. You've got the um, button on the steering wheel here, the star button, um, which you can configure for um, either the automatic park brake, recirculating air, or navigation info. I tend to put it on um, automatic park if brake if I want to use that. Then similarly, there's another button down here which is a diamond button, which again allows you to um, configure those same options. And then you've got a flat tire monitor as well, um, which I have already set, um, has run flat tires, as uh, you probably know. Then if you go into the clock, obviously you can set the clock. Um, yeah, pretty boring language, units monitor brightness and this in phone is where you set your um, Bluetooth pairing. So going back to the menu there's um, there's a help menu down to the um, southeast here um, which I haven't really explored doesn't seem to do a huge amount I think it just puts little texts on the side of the um, screen here for each menu and finally, in the northwest, we have some kind of online um, BMW service. I haven't tried this. I'm not even sure whether it works. Um, let's try BMW online. Network error. Okay, I probably need to set a network somehow. I'm not quite sure how you do that. So I hope you've enjoyed that little tour around the iDrive system. I actually think it's a very innovative and um, pioneering system. Um, I love the the control dial and the fact that it's got this kind of haptic feedback before haptic feedback was even a thing. Now we all take it for granted, obviously, on the iPhone and you know, trackpads and stuff like that. But um, this was a very um, innovative um, solution. Um, I think it's a pretty good way of navigating through you know a, a complex system of menus uh, i think probably a little bit unfairly the iDrive has been has has been given that bad name um, because of the perceived complexity of, of a new system um, but i think you know every other car on the planet now is using this similar you know scroll wheel and and menu system that that we see here so there you go, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. I hope it's been useful um, if you have one of these iDrive, these early iDrive systems. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to smash that like. Uh, it'd be great to have you as a subscriber and click that notification bell, then you won't miss um, any more uh, Maserati Guy videos. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MaseratiGuy2017. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now. Okay, just a little bonus here at the end. I'm gonna see if this phone keypad actually works, this pop-out phone keypad. Okay, I've got a number here that I'm gonna dial. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> Welcome to BMW. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. <sighs> Love it. End. That's hilarious. Fantastic. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.